May we have the confession of faith. Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. Evangelism camp is heaven on this earth. Again, I thought that there would not be a lot of people as it is the Korean holidays, but there are many people here. Please greet the person who is close to you. Say, "Let us go crazy for Jesus." With that, the title for today is the Partisan of Absolute Faith. The multi camps took place in Palawan and Antipolo in the Philippines last week, and the medical camp is still taking place in Luguana. There will also be one in Makati this week. So upon the field of Palawan, I gave the special lecture there for the committed workers, and there were about six hundred pastors. And at the best rating hotel, we ate, slept, and received presents. And they said that it was the first time in the history of Palawan where, in this great hotel, eating here, giving gifts, and receiving the message is the first time. I thought that other people did that too, but they said that it was the first time, and they were so touched. And then. Fifty more pastors came listening to what had happened, and then missionary Chang. We looked for spare beds and added another additional fifty pastors. Then we had the Phil Co Festival. And the young adults went to a school where there were fifteen thousand people came, and when they went in, it was really in the uproar because they thought K-pop stars came, and I went there, and they were very white. Compared to the Filipinos there, so they were really shining. And more than the amens, the sounds of them cheering was really great. There were youths who came, and about sixteen hundred people came, and only fifteen. Hundred seats were prepared, and right now the whole world is very interested in K-pop. But the adults, they were so good that I thought they were K-pop stars, and I thought, how can they receive such rigorous training in the young adults? How can they give worship because they are so good? And I asked, and I, and I heard that Pastor Paul had told me that they prepared all night and day, but they all have specialization. Where that person goes to Samsung, and that person is a police officer. It was something that was unseen in Korea. So I gave the acceptance message, and Pastor Tom gave the message in English. And then I don't know, but he did some b-boy moves, and he's from the naval. And he's American. He's Korean, but he has American citizenship. 
So he was speaking in English. And it was really so charismatic. It was such a thankful camp. And I thought, wow, this is heaven on earth, proclaiming the message of Christ on this earth. For those who have never tasted it, may you be able to taste us. Right now, it is Korean Thanksgiving holidays. And until this Tuesday, it's that I don't give the Thanksgiving Sunday worship, but I heard that there were politicians who are coming. So this is ver a very important time for them. It's the first time I saw so many politicians. So I will introduce them later. So I thought, oh, I must give the sermon. But there were many people here today being able to give worship, and I'm very thankful. So right now, there are thousands of people who are giving this worship non-face-to-face, -face, via online. I am also sure that you have met a lot of your friends and family, and that you have shared the gospel with them. As I have told you in last week sermon, may you have spread the gospel to them. If you have not, I encourage you to share the grace of thankfulness that you have experienced with them through your testimonies. Before I believed in Jesus, after that change. So listening to the stories of those who came last week, there was a person who came because he saw how his wife changed. If that is so, that is something great. But the people around you? Seeing, oh, that person really changed. It means that it's a testimonial evangelization. Upon the grace and thanksgiving that you received, may you be able to relay that. It's not difficult. God is Almighty, so why is it difficult? It's always like that. BC? AD? That's the difference. How I changed. Why cannot we not have testimonials? It's that we don't have change. It means that you did not receive grace. So inside you, may you have peace, joy, and thanksgiving. May you be able to taste this in your lives. In your walk of faith, there's something that you should not lose hold of. That regret saying, oh, I should have shared the gospel back then. These words are no use. You should have preached the gospel. Whoever you meet. Today, There are politicians who have come. And as a pastor, what is there for me to do? All I have to do is preach saying only Jesus is the Christ. The master of history is only Jesus Christ. That's all we have to do. I should have preached the gospel. You don't have to regret. You have to preach the gospel. Apostle Paul shared the gospel in all of his meetings to the point where he confessed that he was innocent of the blood of all. It means that he preached the gospel to all the people that he met. The Korean MC, Song Ye, had passed away. And he was on our stage. And I had preached the gospel, and I made him come to acceptance. I said and explained that Jesus is the Christ, and I said, follow me on the acceptance message. It doesn't matter if you 
drink two, three bottles of soju. If you accept Jesus Christ, it's the end of it. So when I heard that he passed away, I thought, Oh Lord, I don't know if he went to heaven or hell. If he accepted and believed, he went to hell. If he did not, he probably went to. Oh, he. If he accepted, he went to heaven, and if he did not, he went to hell. Upon Jesus's crucifixion, the sinner next to him had said, "Lord, please take me to heaven. I believe." And that person accepted and went to heaven. Until your last breath, if you accept Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven. Effort is religion. It's not the gospel. So you have to preach of this eternal life. It's not by efforts. It's not by money. It's eternal life. Although we cannot be like Paul, you have to try it, mimic it. So what should you do? You must obey. Don't worry about other people's reactions. Just do it. So upon the passage, we can see Paul's journey. Acts chapter twenty-seven, in which we will look in today, records the Apostle Paul's journey to Rome. He was arrested in Jerusalem because of the Jews, who falsely accused him, and was taken before the Sanhedrin assembly for a trial. He was then held captive under General Pallas and Festus for two years in Caesarea, where the Roman governmental officers were. And it was during the time that Paul appealed to the court that he wanted to stand in front of the Roman Emperor. As this appeal was accepted, Paul got on the ship to Rome, but did not go freely on the mission trip as we go on mission trips these days. There were no ships for passengers at that time, and Paul had to go on the cargo ship to Rome as a prisoner. These days, we can predict bad weather and prepare for all sorts of emergencies, but that was simply impossible at that time. Inevitably, the trip to Rome was hit by a tempest called the Northeaster. It is recorded as a great storm. It was not just some gust, but a swirling storm that was ready to devour everything. Verse twenty reads, "When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned." As you can see here, they were in a situation where they cannot stand to see an inch ahead. However, only Paul enjoyed true peace during this crazy time and calmed down 276 people who were on board with him. Here's the reason why: How can Paul be at peace at this situation? Like today's title, he had the absolute faith. The partisan of absolute faith. There are always times when storms come crashing on us in our lives without warnings. So I bless in the name of the Lord that may all young believers build up the absolute partisan of faith during these times, like Paul, and lead a life of a different level. Number one, faith that surpasses the environment. Verses 
one to two. Acts chapter 27 starts with the expression we. We. Like so, we can see that Luke, the author of Acts, who was a doctor, was with Paul. Luke was Paul's doctor as Paul had a lot of diseases and he was always sick. So though Paul was a prisoner, he was the co-worker receiving suffering and going into prison as a prisoner. So co-working is truly a beautiful thing. How much strength would they have been for each other? You must never forget the essential reason why God established the church unity and led us to live a life of faith together. Being together with the Holy Triune God and with each other as a spiritual family of the biblical walk of faith is such a happy thing. This is biblical. At the time, the ship carrying Paul went up to Asia and reached the port of Mura. And Paul transferred there to a ship bound for Rome. The ship was a green carrier that sailed between Ex Alexandria and Rome in Egypt. And, the lar and it was a large boat enough to carry 276 passengers. This was approximately mid-October of A.D. 59. And it's been 59 years since Jesus is coming. However, this was a dangerous time for sailing due to the strong monsoon winds. So it was common sense to anchor in a nearby port, spend the winter there, and then depart to the final destination. Since Paul had already experienced shipwrecks three times during his mission journey, he proposed to stop the voyage and spend the winter in the current port. However, the captain and the owner of the ship argued that it would be better to spend the winter in Phoenix, which was larger than Fair Heavens and had more things to enjoy. And the centurion followed the captain and owner's advice and set sail again. They did not listen to Paul. And they departed Fair Heavens after the wind had died to down to some extent. They said, oh, it was very, very favorable to them, and they were happy of their choice. However, not long after their journey, the ship encountered a storm called the Northeaster. The storm Northeaster is Euroglo in Greek, and it is a combined word of the Greek word Euros, meaning east wind, and the Latin word Achillo, meaning northeast. It refers to the powerful northeast wind that cannot be controlled. Once the ship encounters the storm, it becomes unable to control its direction. Therefore, the natural course was to be pushed helplessly, and then it hit a sandbag or a reef and became shipwrecked. In verses 14 through 19 of the text, the, past, the captain and crew made every effort to overcome the storm. In order to lighten the ship, they tried to overcome the crisis by throwing away all the cargo and even all the ship equipment, but the situation did not change. For 14 days, the big storm continued to rage, and they were gripped by 
extreme fear and darkness, unable to see the stars at night or the sun during the day. You might think that, oh, it's just 14 days, but imagine being in a storm, storm day and night for two weeks. But at this time, looking at the 276 people who were in the state of fear and panic, Paul boldly shouted. In verse 22, it reads, Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. Take heart. Eudemeo. This means to be joyful. It means to be in a very good mood. It's like a doctor telling a patient who is in despair words of encouragement. The situation in reality, it was that it was not a joyful situation, but a situation of despair. It was a perfect situation to be mistaken to be a strange person. However, there was a reason that Apostle Paul was able to speak so boldly. This was because there was a spiritual, spiritual communication with God and Paul. Verses 23 to 24 reads, For this very night here stood before me an angel of God, whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar, and behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. It was the absolute partisan upon the word of God. May you be able to raise the absolute partisan. Then you'll be able to enjoy the storm. God will save everybody. God will be with me. Paul tells them, take heart. The situation did not change. But it's a situation where they were caught in a storm, but he said, take heart, God is with us. The situation did not change, but he said, take heart, do not worry. Fellow believers in life, you'll have storms. But may you have the strand of prayer, of the word, raising the absolute faith, partisan of absolute faith. Depending on the word is what you need to do. Before carrying the cross, Jesus said to his disciples, who were obsessed with fear, in John 16.33, I have said these things to you, that in me you have, may you have peace, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is upon fear. Dear believers, many storms are bound to hit us in our journey through life. A storm of disease arrived. Are you experiencing various storms of economic crisis? Unemployment? Family discord? Interpersonal relationship problems? Or separation by death? Yes, these are all storms. But please be courageous. This happens to anybody. May you take heart. Jesus, who has won the world, he is 24 hours and eternally with us. This is with manual oneness. God is with us. And it's the life that we enjoy this life.
There is no fear, worries, concerns. They have no place. As we are realistically enjoying the blessing of with Emmanuel and oneness, may you be the absolute disciples who enjoy us in our lives. Number two, the time schedule to reconfirm the mission. The mystery behind why Apostle Hall was able to enjoy true peace within the storm upon the northeastern was because he knew that the mission that he was given was not ended. Verse 21 reads, And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. You must stand before Caesar. It's just like today's song that the choir had sung. Standing before Caesar. That's why you must live. Acts 23.11 After overcoming the danger of death at the National Assembly at the Sihetran, Paul had heard the voice of God. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. It was not the time schedule for Paul to yet die. Paul was in a situation where he was um, in the midst of the strong winds that were blowing. But he had definitely a mandate calling and mission. I often tell you the phrase, having life means having a mission. Having life means you have a mission. Man's life and death lies upon the hands of God. There are a lot of, lot of political leaders here. But let's say that North and Korea go on the war. And then, what did Lincoln say upon the war? He said, how close we go to God is what is more important because they believe in God as well. Depending on who is closer to God, you will be able to have victory. Because these political leaders, they're very busy. It's very interesting and fascinating to see these people that I always see on TV. There are very famous people here. So even if you're famous in the world, you must be close to God. So I heard that one of the people here are an elder, is an elder at a church in Yoido. God extending our lives. Is that it means that we have a purpose in our lives. Why are we living? What do we live for? May you leave behind a spiritual masterpiece. As soon as the former president, Suman Lee, became president, he established Christian broadcasting. Of course, he's going to be rewarded by God. Of course, a lot of it has changed, but it wasn't like that from the start. But for him, that was the masterpiece, a monument. But for the other ex-pastors, they were on trial. I don't know why people want to become 
presidents, even if it's such a difficult course in life. But when you look at verse twenty-seven of today's passage, as Paul had proclaimed, a boat was caught on an island. However, at this time, as the prisoners can escape from swimming, the soldiers had said that it would be better for them to die. Paul, who was a prisoner at that time, was amongst these prisoners as well. However, what was surprising is that. Wanting to save Paul, the centurion had stopped the soldiers from doing so, saying that they will find another method to escape from the current situation. It may seem simple, but what is the reason for such detailed descriptions? It's explained that having life means having a mission. Missionary David Livingston, who is called the father of Africa missions, often told his co-workers to tell the people who are worried of him, saying, "Until I complete the reason for my existence and finish my mission, I will not die." Upon strong winds and storms, we have to know what we have to throw away and hold on to. You have to throw away yourself. You have to throw everything away. Upon whatever situation you may be in, may all the nations be possessed. All remnants, all together, we're holding on to this word. So look at the church bulletin. You can see the prayers. God is looking at this, and He's probably in joy. There are many nations that it's the first time that I have even heard of. We cannot go to that nation, and we cannot even know of it. But we pray for it, and then God will work. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you would receive such answers. This is the conclusion. There is a po poem. Titled "I Alone Bloom as a Flower," don't say that the meadow will change because of just me blooming. If you bloom and I also bloom, won't the entire meadows eventually become a flower field? Don't say that the mountain will change if I become colored. If I become colored and you also become colored, eventually the whole mountain will burn brightly. Isn't this true? One person, Paul, bloomed and blossomed, and the evangelization of Asia Minor, Macedonia, and Rome was accomplished. The characters of Romans chapter sixteen blossomed, and together with Paul, colored all of Europe with the gospel. The spiritual ripple effect has reached us until now, and that's why we go to the Philippines and to two, two three, seven nations. We too must turn the field into a flower garden, with the absolute gospel of the three onlys and color everywhere we go with the gospel. Each and every one of you is truly important. You questioning this is going against God. 
you are being casted by God Himself. Please do not get caught up on the introduction. I hope you do not lose hold of the absolute value of how important you are and live a life of the main content. I bless you in the name of the Lord that your home, region, workplace, and academic field will please with the gospel. Dear Father God, may you be able to raise the partisan of faith. It may be a time schedule to confirm our mission. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.